are in uniform. They have gone to the pregame warm-ups. They will be available tonight in a game you will see on cable channel 70 from KRDO TV 13 at Century Communications and here on Sports Radio AM 1240 KRDO. Last night, big night for the Tigers. Brian Swanson was a spectator, however, with a thigh bruise and a knee sprain had Jason Cugnett in civvies. That put the pressure on Judd Lambert, who had only one win in his last seven WCHA starts and fighting controversy that some team members just don't play hard with him in goal. Well, three power play goals and three chances. The first here by Toby Peterson ignited a nine-goal barrage. Jason Goodmanson had one of them as well in this sequence to give CC a lead it would not relinquish but the Badger defense broke down at times. And watch the red and white after this power play goal by Goodmanson just walk away from the puck. They leave it in the faceoff circle, and the Tigers would capitalize. Aaron Carpen scores the first of his two goals. This one is the game winner. The second also came off last Badger defensive play, but a complete win nonetheless. It was a big effort from our goaltender on out. Uh, Aaron Carpin getting a couple goals. We got some goals from guys that haven't scored in a while, and that's so important, Jeff, with a Brian Swanson out of our lineup. Your team played very well in front of you tonight, maybe as well as they have in a long time. I think so. I think uh, that's uh, as few good scoring, scoring opportunities we, as we've given up uh, in a long time, or at least that I've seen. But uh, I think uh, it was a good team effort, a real strong, uh, strong game for us, and uh, we're going to be ready for tomorrow as well. That's Judd Lambert. The Tigers were one of five playoff winners last night, all with relative ease and all home teams. Minnesota and St. Cloud won on home ice, as did North Dakota and Denver, each giving up only one goal. If the teams repeat their successes tonight, CC is heading for a showdown with Denver and with North Dakota waiting for the winner of the Pioneers and the Tigers, while Minnesota would tangle with St. Cloud. That, of course, is if everything remains the same as it did last night. Well, this game tonight is also critical for CC's NCAA tournament hopes. And after this break, we'll have the opening face-off. Stay with us. This is Tiger Hockey. The Colorado Springs Parks and Recreation Department is accepting team registrations for adult sports. Sign up now for spring softball and spring volleyball leagues or the 1997 Slip and Slide Softball Tournaments and the 1997 Co-Ed B, Men's and Women's Power B Volleyball Tournaments. You can register now with the Youth and Recreation Sports Office at 1315 East Pikes Peak Avenue, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information on these great activities, call 578-6981. Drink it for kicks. Senton quality checked dairy products. Journey into the history of the Navajo Hogan on North Nevada. The flavor of the Southwest is brought to life in a unique setting that's sure to bring you back again and again. The chefs at the Navajo Hogan offer a bountiful harvest of authentic Southwest fare, all prepared with the same creativity that won them the 1993 Chef's Gala competition. The historic Navajo Hogan. 2817 North Nevada, one block south of Fillmore. Just look for the chief. Spencer's Lawn and Garden Center and KRDO TV 13 present the Garden Success Show. Hi, I'm Mike Spencer. I'd like to invite you to come by the Garden Show this year and hear the latest on new products straight from the manufacturers themselves and also pick up some good gardening information to help you with your garden this year. The Garden Success Show, March 7th through the 9th at Spencer's Lawn and Garden Center. Putting garden success in the palm of your hand. 1430 South Tejon.
Everybody's ready to go tonight. You saw even during what limited coverage we had of the National Anthem, both Jason Cugnett and Brian Swanson on the ice and in uniform. Cugnett will be the backup to Judd Lambert tonight. And Brian Swanson will play on the fourth line and we'll see spot duty for the Tigers tonight. And of course, Don Lucia will monitor his play and also the contact he is absorbing from the Badgers. There's a good look at the WCHA scoring champion along with Mike Crowley of Minnesota, Brian Swanson from Eagle River, Alaska. And Jason Cugnett coming off a knee sprain, suffered in practice on Monday, ready to back up. And both players should be at full strength next week if there is a next week. Just because the Tigers won 9-3 last night, remember this team has not put two victories together in WCHA play since December the 14th and 15th against Northern Michigan. And now that huddle, which is being... Uh, Directed by number 15, the captain, Eric Rude, getting final instructions and that last-minute pep talk to see if it'll have the jump, the enthusiasm for the A game tonight. And the Badgers of Wisconsin looking to try to keep from playing golf on Monday and packing their stuff up for another year. This will be an emotional effort by the Badgers. You can count on that with a team that has been very disappointing down the stretch. Losers of eight in a row and nine out of ten to this uh, Colorado College team over the last two seasons. The Tigers 4-1 and one against the Badgers this year, 5-0 and oh against Wisconsin a year ago. Tonight's game on Sports Radio is brought to you in part by Home Lighting, Academy Fence, City Line Mortgage Company, Lebanon Associates Realtors, Whitney Electric, Shoemakers Camera Shops, The Sports Fan, and Rampart Supply, all proud sponsors of Colorado College Tiger Hockey on Sports Radio. No changes in the Wisconsin lineup. Tim Rothering is the alternate on the trip, and he's still not healthy enough to play, so Jeff Sauer has to go with what's left. Late arriving crowd, but again, due to the parking situation out front, please be careful if you're on your way in. And now it's time for the fastest game in America, the Western Collegiate Hockey Association playoff game number two. Badgers have it at neutral ice. This is Krug, runs it along the near boards. Badgers have first penetration at the north end of the Tiger ice. Picked up by Scott Swanson behind the net. Lead to Toby Peterson. Tigers are out three on two. Peterson around the corner. Now through the corner. Behind the net. Still stick handling. Had two goals last night. Dumps it in the corner to Austin. Down low to Needham. Turns it towards the net. The Badger defense swats it away from the slot. It comes to the near side. Tigers keep it in. Scott Swanson tries to swat it low. Cook intercepts. Right wing for Ryan Pratt. Comes in at the point. Gets around Needham. Keeps control of the puck. Looks to center. Nobody's crashing. Now he does center, it drifts all the way through the slot, missing on Anderson. But Anderson does field it along the near side, then leaves it behind. Needham swats it to the left point. It is uh, through the neutral zone and deep into Badger territory. No icing call as contact was made by one of the Badgers' far side. Kicked out, it comes to Root at neutral ice, then it's tipped to Goodmanson, then back into Tiger ice to Elfring, near side to Root. Root runs it ahead for Darren Clark. Darren does not see it. The puck is not going to be called for icing though, so it's behind the Badger net. Right wing pass does not connect. Tigers keep it in, poke it towards the slot. Badgers break it up and push it to neutral ice. Grabbed there by T. R. Moreau, near side to Rick Enrico, broken up by Root, still at neutral ice. Now it drifts back into the Tiger end, grabbed by the captain. Had a goal and an assist last night, runs it through the corner, playing in his final home game if the Tigers win tonight. Up the near side again to Haley. He does not connect with it. Needham sends it deep, takes a check from LaPlante, sends it in low. Now it drifts up high. Badgers will get out two on two. Haley, who had a goal last night, right wing to Exhiro. Centers back to Haley. It comes off his skate to the near side. Now sent to the point. One-timer LaPlante. Knocked down Lambert. Rebound comes near circle after it pops up. Grabbed by Chad Hartnell. Hartnell back the other way. Runs it into the near corner. Tries to get around LaPlante. He's headed off by Peterson. LaPlante will get it. Hartnell still pursuing, and then LaPlante puts it into the protective netting far side and play stop. Two minutes, three seconds in, no score. We'll pause for our first time out and be back. This is Tiger Hockey. Blowing winds, harsh sun, damaging hail. A&L Aluminum knows that houses in this part of the country need strong protection. All sides super steel siding is strong enough even for Colorado's weather. Many sidings are not. And A&L's expert installation guarantees your home's beauty for a lifetime and adds insulation value for energy efficiency. For maintenance savings and lasting home beauty, it's got to be all side steel siding. From A&L Aluminum, your partner in home protection at 2726 East Gunnison. 
Puck at neutral ice off the faceoff as the Badgers dump it to neutral ice. Tigers send it back in. Krug through the corner behind the net, left to right. Still stick handling. Wraps it around Ian Peterson. Looks far side to Smith. They do not connect, but the puck drifts into the Tiger end. Now Smith fields it. Sends it behind the net. It comes to Elfring, though. Near side to Brian Swanson on the ice for the first time this weekend. Swanson is knocked down. Tigers send it in. Badgers pick it up quickly and get out. Brian Swanson looks to break it up. Badgers maintain possession. Yuri Gusick sends it in, and the Latvian tries to send it down low. Tigers kick it out. Now Ryan Trek comes in, takes the drive. It's over the crossbar to the far side, grabbed by Rude. That's the first uh, serious shot towards anybody's net. It was not on target. We played three minutes. Tigers have not gotten near Dobbin Speck yet. Anderson at neutral ice for the Badgers. Sends it ahead to Engelhart. Tipped in. Tigers tap it out. Brian Swanson looks for it, doesn't get it. Cook picks it up. Right wing Ryan Preck going to take the wrist shot. Knocked down in traffic. Rebound. Swept behind the net. Toby Peterson. And it comes to the point to Sable. Launches. Deflected. Off John Austin to the near corner. Bodker bounces it off the boards. Ahead for Austin. Toby Peterson can't quite get to it. Badgers pick it up to Engelhart. Coming in at the right point. Stu Bodker wraps him up, puts him into the boards. Engelhart playing with a, uh, an injured shoulder. Just cannot take a lot of punishment. Now Toby Peterson to John Austin. Tigers in two on one. The shot, Austin. The save, Dobbin Speck. The rebound, Enrico. Up the far side. Pushed to neutralize by Engelhart. Grabbed by Needham. Needham's back in quickly. Drops it at the point for Bodker. It's punched out by Enrico. Grabbed by Scott Swanson to Stu Bodker. It drips past him as Stu's waiting to make a line change. Badgers pick it up, come up the near side, clear it to neutral ice, knocked down by Scott Swanson. After it goes, T.R. Moreau gets there first. Swanson bottles him up in the corner. Needham bottles up another Badger as well. That's Joe Bianchi, and play stops. 15.58 left. No score. We're back in 30 seconds. This is Tiger Hockey. Some things just go together, like a day on the slopes, followed by an evening in your own Cal Spa. That's why Cal Spas and Copper Mountain Resort is such a natural combination. Buy any luxurious Cal Spa, and you'll get two free tickets for a day of skiing at Copper, where the skiers ski. For the best value and the best service, only a Cal Spa will do. Buy a Cal Spa and ski for free. What a concept. Head for Spa and Leisure, home of Cal Spas today. Relax. It's a Cal Spa. Puck off the faceoff, still on the Tiger end. Far side to Peters, then to Needham, then back to Peters. Plays it off the far board, carries it in. He's moving to the net! He's in! He just misses! As Dobbin Speck came out of the Badgers, backside protection vacated, and Peters had a march to the net. Now it's brought in by Cryway. He's tangling with Moreau in the corner. It scoots free to Goodmanson behind the net. Goodmanson wants the center, puts it on net, knocked down Dobbin Speck. Rebound Needham. Circles the corner, behind the net to Cryway. Cryway bottled up. Now it comes to the near corner, dug out by Darren Clark. Clark pinned to the boards by Peterson. Cryway comes in to help out. He's hammered. Puck squirts free to the point. Badgers get it out, but wrapped up real quickly is Bianchi. Goodmanson tips it to Needham. Then Needham sends it back, and Enrico fields it. Badgers come in. Badgers come in offside. And the play is stopped with 15.08 remaining in the first period. We are still scoreless here at the Cadet Ice Arena. Defense, a huge factor in the WCHA last night as North Dakota allowed only one goal, Minnesota allowed two, but scored eight, Denver allowed just one, and St. Cloud allowed two. And that uh, makes the Tigers the defense that has allowed the most over the weekend to date, but the Tigers scored the most as well with the 9-3 to three victory. And that's our score from last night. Right now we're sitting on a scoreless First period at the Cadet Ice Arena. Face off above the Tiger Blue Line at neutral ice. Badgers win the draw, but the puck scores free to Scott Swanson. Sends it to Paul Johnson. Johnson rolls it through the corner. It's broken up by the Badgers. In they come. Here's a drive by Exhiros, deflected by Scott Swanson. Swanson retrieves the rebound in the corner to Johnson. Broken up by Wisconsin. Picked up Haley. Centering pass. Shot. Rebound. Kicked out by Lambert. Tough shot. Krug tries to send it down low one time. Tigers break it up, and Scott Swanson heads back the other way. Scott, no look, drop pass to Chad Hartnell, coming in along the near side. Centers, tipped towards the net by Scott Swanson and broken up by the Badgers. Johnson keeps it alive in the corner, sends it behind the net, grabbed by Krug. Krug sends it up the near side, connects with Haley. 14.25 to go in a scoreless first period, and Haley flips it deep into the corner. Well, Badgers are going to make a change. They'll do a lot of short shifting tonight. Paul Johnson circles the net, brings it up, lead to Carpin, tipped into the near corner of the Wisconsin end, and an icing call. Again, the uh, 
call on icing comes with the pass touched by one of the Tigers at neutral ice, but so close to the red line that uh, it was not on the Badger side of it to warrant waving off the ice. So they'll bring it back into the Tiger end for a faceoff with 14.09 left. And again, scoreless here in the first period. Brian Swanson looking to win the draw. Against the Badgers, Dan Bjornley. Bjornley is tossed out. Smith steps in. Puck pops free to the corner. Elfring can't do anything with it. Gusick and Bjornley, or Smith rather, force play, and it squirts out of the corner to Eric Rude. Now far side to Elfring. Elfring to K.J. Voorhees. Got Brian Swanson open. Connects. Brian's got to take it laterally along the blue line and now wait for Ian Peterson to get back on side. Ian picks it up, dumps it in, and it, con it connects with the protective netting far side, and play is stopped. There was an instance where Brian Swanson was breaking from the near side, and the pass just could not be completed from Voorhees to Swanson. Brian's had a couple of shifts already. He seems to be moving around all right, not favoring the knee any. And again, the... Uh, Excellent work of team trainer Richard Quincy getting Jason Cugnett and Brian Swanson back into action. Early in the week, it looked like they both could be probable for even Friday night. But Cugnett started receiving a little pain, and Swanson had some swelling, so they held him off another day. Here's a wrist shot. Lambert screen, knocks it down. Tigers sweep the rebound away, but the Tigers, I think, are going to get a penalty here. A holding call coming up with CC as the Badgers got in front of the Tiger net, and a two-minute minor going to Cal Elfring, first penalty of the night with 13.30 to play. We've gone through the first six minutes and 30 seconds before an infraction was whistled, and tonight it is Wisconsin that goes on the power play first. Last night, these two teams traded power play goals early to uh, be even, and then the Tigers sprung two more power play goals later in the period and we're off to a three to one first period lead. Elfring had a hold of the stick of one of the Badgers so Tigers will try to kill this penalty and interesting Brian Swanson is on the penalty kill unit and apparently is feeling a lot better than uh, he was yesterday and during warm-ups today. Badgers have the puck at the point off the faceoff Send it laterally along the blue line near side. Fielded by T.R. Moreau. Now to X. Hiros. Takes the drive. That one's deflected way upstairs in the end zone off the stick of Darren Clark. So another faceoff in the Tiger zone. One minute, 45 seconds left on the power play. Judd Lambert turned away 18 of 21 last night. Had some very, very big saves. His saves percentage did not improve last night. He had a ricochet goal. That came off one of the Tigers past him. A turnover in front of him, he couldn't stop. And then the power play goal early in the first period. But other than that, he had a very good night in net. Badgers send it in, but they brought it outside the zone first. So after they get back on side, Tigers just get the chance to clear it. Badgers pick it up behind their own net. Right wing, Ryan Freck, the big freshman, comes in, rolls it into the corner. Needham's going to get there first. Slaps it up off the boards to Toby Peterson, and Toby finishes off the clear. And Dobbin Speck slows it off the end boards. It is grabbed by the Badgers and brought up the near side, dumped in along the near side boards. Bianchi gets around Austin, but has to circle the net as Austin cut off his path. Still with the puck behind the net, wants to center, now tries a wrap around, wrapped up by Dan Peters, now brings it up top to Engelhart. The leading scorer takes the drive, deflected blocker style by Lambert into the protective netting and play stops. 12.23 left, 53 seconds left on the power play, and the Badgers uh, having the upper hand here territorially in the first period of play. Well, if everything continues tonight the way it did last night, the Tigers are cruising for a meeting with their arch rival Denver next Thursday night at the St. Paul Civic Center, and the Tigers more than likely would have to win that game in order to have a shot at the NCAA tournament. We'll have more on that as the broadcast wears on. Badgers take a pass through the corner, comes behind them at the Scott Swanson. Now a turnover by the Tigers, Darren Clark. Drive by Sabo, knocked down by Lambert. Tigers clear it out. 
Tigers just not making the clearing effort as Darren Clark is victimized. Badgers head back the other way. Now Brian Swanson trying to snipe it. Haley, Haley wins that battle in the corner to Enrico. Back to Haley. Swanson breaks it up. It comes to Scott Swanson. Sends it to the point. Badgers can't quite keep it in. It drifts off the stick, and now the Tigers have it. Coming in shorthanded, and Clark's going to the net, and it's knocked away by Dobbin Speck. Clark going on top and spec one on one. Short handed effort. Tigers keep it in short handed. Needham down low. It's deflected by Haley before it got to Brian Swanson. Now Brian brings it to Bob. And Bob keeps it in. Stir, uh, turns himself around one man. Tries to center Tanberg. Misfires. Tigers have killed the penalty. Tigers keep it in. Hartnell, the drive is wide. Comes to the near side. Kept in by Needham. Backhands it through the corner. Behind the net to Tanberg. Now the Tigers have have a buzz on up top to Swanson the drive by Scott is wide and high rebound to Needham near side down low off the skate of Carpin centers man open tipped away by Engelhart from Scott Swanson Carpin retrieves sends it to the corner Badgers try to clear they hit Bob Needham at neutral ice Needham sends it in right wing to Hartnell from Carpin Hartnell centers broken up by a diving Sabo Badgers clear to the blue line kept in by Rune fires the wrist shot just wide Good pressure by CC. Sabo winds up, doesn't get it out. Kept in Elfring. Oh, no, the Tigers are offside. Needham thought he kept it in, but Tim Swider says nope. And the crowd comes to its feet here. Proud of the pressure and listen to the noise in a scoreless first period. They are standing here at the Cadet Ice Arena. This crowd wants the Badgers finished off tonight. And the Tigers are trying to make that happen. Wisconsin with the initial territorial sway, but now since the power play was killed, the Tigers seem to be coming at Kirk Dobbins Speck. Draws one by the Tigers. Bodker to Peters. They collide, but Peters gets it on net. It comes to the point. Root slaps it towards the corner. Three red shirts there. And the Badgers get out, but two on two. Smith rolls it slowly into the Tiger end. Through the corner. Peters gets there first. Gets around one man, now turns back to come the other way. Comes out in front of the net, still stick handling, has to circle the net as the Tigers have not filled the passing lanes. Peters now goes left wing to Austin. Long lead will be played off the near boards by Bodker. Tips it into the Wisconsin zone. Krug is there. Krug will go behind the net. Balance off the Badgers. Sends it up the far side to Smith. Bjornley almost broke that up. Tigers send it back in, but this time they come in offside as Toby Peterson was still in from the previous rush. We're still scoreless. 9.59 left in the first period. Still a lot of folks trying to get into the building here with the parking situation as it is. Tigers did not quite sell out last night. Their auxiliary seating was, was uh, left over. They did uh, sell all the seating in the arena proper came close to 2800 but 2902 is full capacity with auxiliary tigers send it in through the near corner after it goes laplante tigers are tagged though with another icing call we'll pause and return we're scoreless at the cadet ice arena as Colorado Springs continues to grow, so does the demand for people with drafting skills. In as little as 15 months, you could earn an associate's degree in architectural or mechanical drafting from Technical Trades Institute and have the qualified skills that are in demand as Colorado continues to grow. TTI's extensive individualized instruction includes the latest CAD programs, including AutoCAD. Plan a rewarding future. Call TTI now at 632-7626 to start your drafting career. As we come back, Judd Lambert has the puck in his mitt. A uh, drive from just below the blue line by Peterson. His glove by Lambert, saw it all the way, was not screened. And a faceoff evolves near circle, Tiger zone. Ryan Precht wins the draw to Engelhart. Now he is screened, and this one bounces off the post. Judd got a piece of it, it deflected off the post. Centering pass, Badgers misfire, had a great scoring chance. Tigers in transition, two on one. Fryway, inside, backhander, Dolphin Speck the save, Clark the rebound, Dolphin Speck covers up. Fryway went right to the net, he had Clark trailing the play, and he ran out of real estate and time to make the decision to go to Clark, so he took it right to Dolphin Speck, and Kirk comes up with the stop on the two on one odd man for CC. 9.30 remains in the period. We are still scoreless. Here's the break by CC. And right about here is where the decision has to be made. And 
Cryway took the shot. Dobbins Beck stayed with it, while Peterson stayed with Clark. Up top to Elfring, off the faceoff. A drive is knocked down in traffic by Sabo. Badgers pick it up, clear it out, broken up by Elfring. Bradley tries to push it ahead. Elfring gets the job done. Brian Swanson brings it in. Picked up Ian Peterson. Peterson takes the drive, hits the side of the net. Grabs it from behind the net. Up top to Elfring. Archer Rude. Here's the drive. Dobbins back to stop. Penalty coming to the Badgers. Shot by Rude. Rebound is loose. And now the Badgers finally pick it up. A penalty coming to Wisconsin as the Tigers really crash into the Wisconsin zone. And now the quickness of CC starts to assert itself. Sabo goes to the penalty box for Wisconsin. 9.06 left in the first period. We've played 10.54. Tigers connected on their first three power plays last night. And finished the night. Three for five. Sabo gets a roughing call. Tigers have had 20 more home power play chances than any other team in the league and 40 more than Wisconsin. More on that later. Elfring keeps it in. Nearly lost it. Near side to Toby Peterson. Now back to Elfring, high center, far side to Austin, up top to Rude. This was the power play combination that clicked for the first one last night. Austin looking for Bodker, pushed off his stick. Tigers dig it out near side. Elfring to Toby Peterson in the corner. Toby, bird dog by Krug, yields to Bodker. Stu's in the corner. Now no look behind the back up the near side to Toby Peterson. Looks inside, goes towards the net. Now to Bodker, thinking give and go. Stu comes up top to Elfring, far side to Rude. Fans on the one-timer. Got a piece of it. Austin is knocked down. Badgers try to clear. And ricochets to Elfring. Keeps it in. Steers it near side. Bodker's going to run it through the corner. All the way to the far side to Austin. 115 left on the man advantage. It drifts to Root at the point. Root's going to take the wrist shot. Knocked down in traffic. Rebound comes to Elfring. He's got an avenue. Dobbins back is screen. Tries to thread it through. It's knocked down. The rebound. Knocked down Dobbins back. Another rebound by Bodker. Covered up by Dobbins back. And then Elfring. And... Peterson get into a shoving match and quickly in front of Dobbins spec comes Krug and Peterson to or Engelhart rather to break off any further contact good flurry by CC but they're unable to push it through the Badger defense with 807 left in the period 101 left on the man advantage both teams are changing up special units we were uh, trying to catch some of the scores Denver leads Duluth 2-1. to one. North Dakota leads Michigan Tech 3-0 to nothing in the first period of play. And St. Cloud has a 2-1 to one lead on Northern Michigan. All the game's a little tighter tonight than, uh, than last night. And you heard Don Lucia talk about that in the pregame show. He expected it. Tigers have 101 left on the power play to the penalty to Sabo out on the ice. Brian Swanson, first power play appearance of the weekend to Scott Swanson as Brian wins the draw. Now to Brian from Scott, down low to Clark in the corner. Centers, man open, tipped away by Dobbins Speck. Puck loose, Tuck, Tigers are mucking and grinding down there, trying to push it past Dobbins Speck. Goodman's in a shot, kicked out to the point. Scott Swanson fields it near side to Brian. Brian back up top to Scott, winds up, slides it far side to Goodmanson, into, Toby, into Cryway, through to Brian Swanson, tipped off the post by Cryway. Beautiful feed from Brian Swanson, Cryway just missed. Now center to Clark, off his chest, towards the net, Dobbins Speck dives, pushes it towards the corner. Goodmanson digs it out, Tigers have it behind the net, we got a whistle, and now we've got Peterson tied up with uh, Darren Clark, I believe. And the officials are trying to separate them over in the Zamboni corner. Dobbins Speck went down, appeared to be uh, hurt momentarily. 7.30 left in the period. 24 seconds left in the uh, Tiger power play. Penalties are coming. We're going to pause for a timeout and sort it out for you. Tigers with a scoreless first period on Sports Radio AM 1240, KRDO Radio, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Come on in to Conway's Red Top. You need two hands, the biggest burger in all of the land. Dress them up with chili and cheese. You can fix them any way you please. Come on in to Conway's Red Top. Man, I tell you, one's a meal. 
as we come back to the Cadet Ice Arena, Kirk Dobbins back weathering quite a flurry by the Tigers on this power play and the preceding sequence that wound up drawing the uh, penalty. Dobbins back down on his knees, still in front of the cage. And Don Adam trying to uh, get this one back into flight here. Dobbins Speck will try to buy some time tonight for his wounded and winded Badgers. Puck comes to the point off the face off to Dan Peters, near side to Scott Swanson. Now back to Peters, throws it down low to Brian Swanson. Dug out by Cryway. Badgers pick it up, clear it out, and the puck drifts into the Tiger end. Both penalties are double minors for roughing. Badgers kill the Tiger power play. We're back to even strength hockey. Five on five, got a whistle. The Badgers have just iced the puck with six minutes and 59 seconds left here in the first period. Darren Clark and the Badgers, Matt Peterson from Maple Grove, Minnesota, a junior defenseman, six foot, 195. We'll uh, have a pretty good little break here of four minutes. You look at Judd Lambert. A perpetual pushing of ice shavings to the side. The goaltender's pastime. Faceoff will come near circle. Ty uh, Badger zone. Needham has it up high. Goes down low. Tries to hit carpet. It's broken up. Now it drifts to the far corner. After it is Smith for the Badgers. Gets it around Tanberg near side to Anderson. And Mike's coming up the near side. Trying to clear. Kept in by Needham. Bounced to Hartnell. Pinball play at the blue line, finally picked up by Dan Bjornley, sends it off the near boards, it comes to Needham, he tosses it to Elfring. Now the far side to Tanberg, and Tanberg will run it through the Zamboni corner. Dobbin Speck slows it and leaves it there for Anderson. Anderson steps around Hartnell, comes up the near side, pushes it ahead to Bjornley, steps around Needham. Bob catches up again along the near side. Bjornley sends it deep. Tigers pick it up, flip it to the point. Bjornley keeps it in. Now sent along the near boards towards the corner to Smith. Centers, nobody home. This goes to the far side boards. Grabbed by Tanberg. Tanberg looks ahead, trying to thread the needle to carpet. Aaron comes in, has to find the puck. Ridden into the corner, comes up with it, wants to center. Tigers in a line change. Carpin goes down. Badgers take it away, come back the other direction. Near side to Yuri Gusick. Lead pass connects with Stu Bodker, but the Badgers get in. It drifts to the point. Engelhart down low to Ryan Precht and poked off his stick by Scott Swanson. Grabbed by Bodker in the corner. Stu gets around one man. Lead to Toby Peterson. Comes in, draws the defense together. Dishes left wing to Austin. Austin was breaking. Toby has to retrieve it. Leaves it in the corner for Austin, who's caught up with the play. In front to Root. One-timer knocked down in traffic by LaPlante. Puck comes to the slot. Dobbin Speck kicks it to the medium slot, where it's grabbed and brought out of the zone by Engelhardt. Full out of steam. One-on-one -on -one with Scott Swanson. Scott sweeps it off his stick. Rides him into the corner. But the Badgers have three red shirts low. And keep the puck. Now it's frozen against the boards with 5.14 left, and play comes to a halt. We're still scoreless. We're going to take another break and return to the Cadet Ice Arena. This is Tiger Hockey. Registration for the Colorado Springs Parks and Recreation Department's spring programs will be held February 10th through the 14th. KRDO Learn to Skate and Hockey Fundamentals class registration from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Surditch Ice Center and Memorial Park. Call 578-6883 for more information. Spring Youth Soccer Program registration will be held from February 10th to March 7th at the Sports Office in Memorial Park. Call 578-6981 for more information. Brought to you by the Youth and Recreation Division. 50 years, partners for life. To action, face-off goes into the far corner. Dan Peters has one badger wrapped up. Moreau comes in to help out, but the puck comes to Needham. Peters still tied up in the corner. Finally, the two players release. Needham hangs onto the puck, runs it off the far boards in front of the badger bench. Tigers... Goodmanson dumps it in. Badgers clear it out. This will be an icing call, but it's coming on net, so Lambert's got to slow it. Sends it up the far side to Needham. First with the glove, then the stick, looking for Cryway. Cryway didn't see it coming. It drifts into the Badger end. No icing call. Krug in the corner, up the near side, right to Brian Swanson. Turns it through the slot. Off the skate of T.R. Moreau to neutral ice and slapped back in by Elfring. Slowed by Dobbin Speck behind the Badger net. Picked up Sabo. Near side, Krug. Lead out of the zone. Misfires. High in the Tiger zone. Elfring has it. Pulls up along the near side to Cryway. Tries to tip it off the boards. Broken up by Krug. Retrieved by Carpin. Far side to Elfring. Through center ice. In high in the zone. Runs it to the corner. Dobbin Speck will slow it behind the net. Krug has it for Wisconsin. 
Drops it off to Bradley. Bradley has it poked off a stick by Hartnell. Right to Anderson. Rolls it into neutral ice. Tigers Elfring takes a gamble and loses. Badgers bring it in. Drop pass by Exaros. Badgers were in a change. Elfring grabs the puck. Leads a three-on-three -three rush in. Has it poked off his stick. It rolls slowly to the end zone. Pushed far side by Wisconsin. Dug out by the Badgers. And they're back the other way. Right wing pass deflected Scott Swanson into the Badger bench. And a couple of coaches battle for it. And they toss it into the crowd for a souvenir. 3.45 remains in period number one. We are still scoreless here. The Tigers looking for a pass to St. Paul. But they have to get by the Badgers to make that happen. And right now, it is undecided. Tigers clearly with the 1-0 edge in the series with the 9-3 win last night. But they've got to win another. And they haven't dented Dobbin Speck yet. Dobbin Speck has been in goal for the nine losses in the last 10 games between these two teams. Thought was running through the arena that Dobbin Speck is due for a hot game. Well, he's had a pretty good one so far. Tigers have hit one post. Now they dig it out in the corner. Center man open. Toby Peterson fans on the shot. Kept in. Set down low. Toby's got another crack. Sends it with a skate towards the net. Dobbin Speck clears it to the point. Needham breaks it up. Toby's got it again. Now he's pushed into the boards, but not before he delivers behind the net. Anderson steers it up the far side to X Harrells. Broken up by Scott Swanson. Kept alive by Stu Bodker. Bodker goes to the net. Fires wide. Puck comes to the near side. Oh, out in front of the Badger bench, Scott Swanson. And Chris X. Haros get tangled up, and Scott Swanson, I think, is going to wind up with the penalty for tripping. X. Haros and uh, Swanson are really going at it, and Swanson's the one that gets caught with the penalty with 3.16 left in the first period. We played 16.44. And Scott Swanson is in the box for the first time tonight with the tripping call. And the Badgers get their second power play crack. They're 0 for 1 tonight. Last night they were 1 out of 4. Badgers at one time during the year had the best power play record on the road. They were almost 28% efficient on the road. While at home they had a Paltry 13%. But they are good on the road on the power play. They bring it in right side. Oh, they're offside. Bianchi walked in six minutes ahead of the puck. And unbelievable at this time of the year, your timing can be that far off. And uh, Bianchi is giving uh, Don Adams some heat over it. But there wasn't any question about it. Now, maybe he's saying one of the Tigers gave him a little shove to get him started that way. But we didn't see it from our vantage point. There's Judd Lambert. He has to come up big in the next two minutes here to keep the Badgers off the board while Scott Swanson gets a breather in the penalty box. Tigers win the draw. Root clears it the length of the ice. Found a nice avenue. Grabbed by Sable. Pulls up behind the net. Put Engelhardt on the right wing and Smith on the left. It goes to Engelhardt off the skate first, then run in deep. Catches the assistant referee and an icing call. Tiger bench called that before assistant referee Tim Swider made the judgment. So the Badgers end up bringing themselves back into their own zone for a face-off as Judd Lambert and Eric Root confer for a moment. Brian Swanson gets another seat on the bench. He's had a lot of ice time here for a guy that was supposed to be spotted here tonight. But of course, he hasn't skated all week. Today's appearance on the ice is the first time since the injury on Tuesday. About halfway through the Tuesday practice, Swanson went down. Cugnet went down the day before. But yesterday was the first day the swelling really started to disappear and Brian didn't have any today. Left wing pass to Bianchi, centering pass, broken up Lambert in the corner, another centering pass, too hard, too fast, and the Tigers clear it out, shorthanded, Toby Peterson in a race, has Bodker trailing the play, Peterson circles the net, comes up the near side, shorthanded, and now with all the passing lanes covered, he dishes back to Bob Needham in his own zone. Crowd came to its feet thinking that Peterson and Bodker might have something working, and then Needham clears it all the way in on Dobbin Speck, who had a little trouble with the puck once he made the stop. Badgers play around with it in their own end and can't get it out, and Jeff Sauer is just beside himself on the Badger bench that they cannot make a pass and get going. Now with 43 seconds in the power play, they come in. They're all grouped at the blue line, so now they've got to spread out. 
Behind the net it comes. Moreau takes it towards the corner. Tigers box him in. Needham gets it out. Then pushed out of the zone by Austin. Another two-on-one shorthanded. Austin pushes it too far ahead. And Xaros bangs it to the corner. Austin trying to kill some time with the four-check shorthanded. Now has to come back as the Badgers are breaking out. Left wing T.R. Moreau in at the left point. Pushes it past Needham. But Needham holds up Moreau. Puck drifts behind the net. Needham steers it up the far side. Bodker is banged. Badgers keep it in at the point. Far side now. Three white shirts converge. Break it up. Brian Swanson gets out. Has it taken off his stick. He retrieves it. Now he's going to come back towards his own blue line. Penalty is over. Even strength. Both teams. And Swanson circles some more, waiting for the line change to be complete. Long lead pass for Cryway. Fields it. Poked off his stick by Krug. Krug's going to run through the corner. Cryway all over him. Takes him to the boards. Tiger starting to pick up the physical tempo. Out of the corner comes Bjornley. Brian Swanson wraps him up. We've got a minute left in the period. Tigers from neutral ice back into the Badger zone to Cryway. Cryway loses it. Gruden brings it to the point to Rude. Down low. Clark couldn't field the nice pass from Rude. Knocked down from behind. No call is Cryway. And sitting on top of him is Krug. No call. Badgers get out. Bjornley far side. Pulls up. Rude breaks it up. Sends it behind the net. Carpen gets a piece of it. Badgers take it away. And then Clark comes the length of the ice to field it. 31 seconds left in the period. Tigers back two on two. In at the right point, Darren Clark. Drop pass for Carpen. Gusick steps in front of him. Lead pass to Smith. Smith rolls it far corner. Badgers will make a change with 20 seconds left. Looks like a scoreless first period. About to come to a halt. One more rush for the Tigers. Lead pass to Tanberg from Scott Swanson. Into the corner with 11 seconds. Behind the net. Dobbin Speck leaves it. Picked up there by LaPlante. He's going to hang on to it and kill the clock. Four seconds, three seconds. First period is in the books. No score. We'll be back in two minutes. This is Tiger Hockey on Sports Radio and Cable Channel 70 from KRDO-TV and Century Communications. KNCRV, KNCRV, number one in motor homes, KNCRV. And right now, KNCRV is celebrating its 25th year business with a special anniversary sale. You'll find one-of-a-kind savings on top brand motorhomes, fifth wheels, and travel trailers, and great prices on all our youth inventory. So come join us now at one of our two convenient locations, just 25 miles north of Denver on I-25 or Colorado Springs. Bills, bills, bills. How are you going to pay all those bills? There are lots of ways to come up with cash, but the fastest, easiest, and most convenient way is through Acme Pond. Acme loans cash on almost anything of value. For nearly two decades, Acme has been Colorado Springs' premier pawn shop, offering a free 10-day grace period on all 30-day loans and loaning you the cash you need now. Confused about the Brady Bill? Call or stop by any of Acme's three locations to have your questions answered. Whether you want to buy, sell, or trade, or if you need a loan, the only name to remember is Acme Pond. As Colorado Springs continues to grow, so does the demand for people with drafting skills. In as little as 15 months, you could earn an associate's degree in architectural or mechanical drafting from Technical Trades Institute and have the qualified skills that are in demand as Colorado continues to grow. DTI's extensive individualized instruction includes the latest CAD programs, including AutoCAD. Plan a rewarding future. Call TTI now at 632-7626 to start your drafting career. Some things just go together, like a day on the slopes, followed by an evening in your own Cal Spa. That's why Cal Spas and Copper Mountain Resort is such a natural combination. Buy any luxurious Cal Spa and you'll get two free tickets for a day of skiing at Copper, where the skiers ski. For the best value and the best service, only a Cal Spa will do. Buy a Cal Spa and ski for free. What a concept. Head for Spa and Leisure, home of Cal Spas today. Relax. It's a Cal Spa. Denver Paralegal Institute. DPI only accepts college graduates, so I'm in class with people at my level. It makes a huge difference. DPI is simply the best paralegal program I know of. Their students are all college graduates, their faculty are all practicing attorneys, and they're ABA approved. DPI sets the standard for paralegals. Denver Paralegal Institute, setting the standard in paralegal education. Call 444-0190. Tigers took four for eight minutes. One of those was the uh, double minor that Darren Clark took, and the Badgers took three for six. Better penalty numbers for the Badgers tonight than last night when they were victimized by three power play goals from the Tigers. So the first period is in the books. We've solved nothing. 
The Tigers need a win to go to St. Paul, and it's still nothing, nothing. We're going to take a timeout. Our Tiger profile is next. We've got Travis Shane with us as his career appears to be at an end for the Tigers. We want to talk with him and have you hear from him after this. At Home Furnishings Plus, price is only the beginning of a great value. You also get famous Roy Hill quality. For a very limited time, you can buy this Broy Hill Fontana Collection sofa featured in sage green print with contrasting pillows and cushions or this contemporary stripe Broy Hill Fontana sofa featuring self-decking and impeccable tailoring for only $5.79 each. You'll also find great savings on matching Broy Hill love seats, chairs, and ottomans. We simply sell for less. Join World Gym now and add your family members for a dollar each. Start working out in a state-of-the-art facility with personalized training, aerobic and step classes, cardio center, World Gym's fully supervised children's activity center, and more. And when you join World Gym now, your family members can join too for just one dollar each. Call 532-9999 for the location nearest you. World Gym, a family place for fitness. News 13, the leader in total news coverage. Not only bringing you the big stories. Just moments ago, a man surrendered in what had been a three-hour standoff. But all the stories. A Pueblo shelter is now providing equal opportunities for kids in trouble. Taking you beyond the headlines and giving you a better understanding of what's going on and why. Southern Colorado's most comprehensive local newscast. News 13 everywhere, every day. Catch the very best in amateur boxing at the 1997 Everlast U.S. Boxing Championships. Preliminary and semifinal rounds take place March 9th through the 12th at the U.S. Olympic Training Center. And don't miss the main event on Friday night, March 14th at the Colorado Springs Auditorium. The 1997 Everlast U.S. Boxing Championships. Brought to you by USA Boxing, the Colorado Springs Sports Corporation, Sports Radio AM 1240 KRDO, and KRDO TV 13. Bringing you more local sports. We are back at the Cadet Ice Arena, scoreless second game in the best of three WCHA first round playoffs between the Tigers and the Badgers. Time now for our Tiger profile, brought to you by Whitney Electric, proud sponsors of Tiger Hockey on Sports Radio, and helping to supply the power to the Pikes Peak region, also teaming with Colorado College to bring the fun to the Pikes Peak region in the form of Tiger Hockey. And joining us now live is Travis Shane. And Travis, first of all, thanks for taking the time to join us, but quite honestly, I'd rather see you out on the ice and up here in the booth this evening. Yeah, definitely. It's frustrating, you know, uh, coming up out to the Air Force Academy and not being able to be out there, you know, doing what I do. And it's uh, it's been a transitional period for me right now, just trying to, you know, see what's going on with my, my head and everything. And uh, I guess, uh, quite like Quinn says, the best thing that I sit out right now. Well, and of course, let's back up and tell people uh, what transpired. First of all, you had a problem with your hand early in the year. That kept you out. Uh, for a number of weeks and then in the series the most recent series against Denver you took a bump which we were first told uh, was a neck problem of some kind but it progressed into a concussion uh, for, for all intents and purposes is that correct yeah um, it was just it was at the Air Force Academy uh, the first game here against Denver that I took a shot to the I went to hit a guy in the corner and he lifted his elbow up and hit me in the earpiece so I think it was just like uh, just under from Quince and me and, and coach, it was uh, it wasn't actually a neck injury. It was a hit to the ear, and I had been I was dizzy. But the next day I was fine. And then uh, uh, on the Wednesday of that next week in practice, uh, Aaron Carp and I ran into each other head on, and uh, that's when my the, the serious headaches started, and they stayed. And you told me during the break that you've had some relief from them. They seem to be fewer and further between, but they're still there, and you can't do anything for 30 days until they're gone. Right. No, it's pretty dependent on the uh, the medication I take, and if I uh, slip up even an hour, like like I'm supposed to take them every eight-hour periods, and if I uh, slip up within an hour, I get the headaches back, but right now the, uh, the, the pills that I'm on are doing a fairly good job. Well, this is a lousy break. There isn't any question about that, but how would you describe your experience here at Colorado College? And you still have a year to finish the educational phase of this. Are you going to do that? And has this been a, a, a good experience for you despite the injury? Oh, yeah, it's definitely been a good experience. I like CC. It's a, it's a great, I mean, it's a great school. It's great to meet a bunch of great guys playing on the hockey team. I uh, meet some good friends, uh, Mark Morgenstern, Sally Meyer, that's uh, been really like, great to me this last while. And uh, I mean, just stuff like that. Uh, you really get to, uh, you know, uh, form relationships with people and it's it's just been a, a great experience for me we're visiting with Travis Shane of the Tigers number 23 is a career 
uh, apparently at an end because he needs to wait out a full month before he can come back to action, and that would take him right up to the NCAA Finals if the Tigers were fortunate enough to get there. You and I talked last year. You've got tremendous size. Uh, you have also uh, very good skill. You might be able to work your way through the pro ranks uh, to a role situation somewhere uh, if the right situation came up. Since you still have another year to finish your education, are, are you thinking about taking that route, or do you want to finish school, Travis? Oh, I definitely want to finish school, and uh, the, the role that I'd have to play uh, involves me sticking my head out there, and I don't know, this last hit, uh, it really uh, made me look at things a little differently, so I don't know. It's going to be a long summer, and um, just the recovery process, and to see if I get back, and then I'll, I think I'll make decisions then. Well, I hope you're not through playing, and I hope a nasty rumor I heard is not true, uh, that you said to somebody that when it's all said and done this year, somebody else can pick up your stuff because you're all done, you're not picking up a stick again. Tell me that's not true. Well, I don't know. That It's really been pretty scary that, uh, I mean, I was suffering memory loss and stuff like that, and it's, uh, you know, stuff that you get so used to in your life, and then all of a sudden you're missing a few things. It's uh, really an eye-opener. Well, you also had your friend from North Battleford, uh, Jason Cugnett, uh, uh, injured this week. Seems like North Battleford has had a rough run. Your injuries, his, and then of course your good friend Lane Humaney got a bad deal at Northern Michigan. So, uh, but Northern North Battleford will bounce back, will it not? Oh, guaranteed. We got Cugnut out here, and uh, the guy's a character through and through. And so, uh, um, he's made it pretty cool. Like I really like having him here and stuff like that. And I'm I'm glad he came here. And yeah, he'll bounce back if it's just him by himself. He's he can take on enough load to uh, make it good for North Battleford. A lot of your points as a Tiger, the majority of them came on the road, and you had great success against Wisconsin. Is there more pain in not getting a chance to face this Badger team that you like to really mix it up with than there is in the headaches? Um, oh, yeah, definitely. It's really frustrating. I want to play in the playoffs. That's where I like to play because uh, it seems, you know, a lot of guys choke, a lot of guys, you know, it's it's just an intense, intense time of the year, and, uh, and I like to be intense, and uh, not being out there really hurts, and it, uh, like practice and stuff like that when I'm out there. I get pretty depressed, and so I have to go talk to Quince, talk to Sally and Mark, and it's tough, but I, I, like everyone says, it's something I have to go through right now. Well, Travis, uh, I certainly appreciate the relationship over the last couple of years. This has been a tough year for you, but you have handled this with a great deal of maturity and, and dignity and grace, and I salute you for it and wish you all the best. Thank you. Travis Shane, thank all you right. very much. The big number 23, we're going to miss his presence in the corners and, of course, uh, on the road where he had such a terrific career with the CC Tigers. That's our Tiger profile from Whitney Electric, help bringing the power and the fun to the Pikes Peak region. We'll take a timeout and return. Second period is just around the corner. Stay with us. KRDO TV is joining forces with ABC for its March Against Drugs. It's a public service campaign devoted to arresting the alarming rise in teen drug use. The foundation of our campaign will be public service announcements that will air in every hour of our programming during the month of March. This month-long effort culminates with an ABC News Town Hall meeting Sunday, March 30th at 6 p.m. News 13 will be focusing on drug-related issues in our broadcasts. Watch all month long for the March Against Drugs, brought to you by KRDO-TV and the ABC Television Network. When Miss Hittner's class visited meteorologist Dana Tyler at the News 13 Weather Center, they were impressed. Not because Dana has over 15 years of forecasting experience or that she uses the region's coolest state-of-the-art computers. It wasn't even because she could answer all of their questions. No, what really impressed the kids was taking part in that amazing meteorological phenomenon. <laughs> News 13 weather. Experience counts. If Irish eyes are smiling, it must be time for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. On March 15th, a wee touch of Ireland will come to old Colorado City in the form of festive floats, giants from far off places, music that'll have you dancing in the streets, and plenty of smiling faces. So bring the family and join us Saturday, March 15th at noon. The St. Patrick's Day Parade, sponsored by the laddies and lassies at Riley Buick GMC Truck, Budweiser, and KRDO. KRDO TV, the station that brings you more local sports, presents Winds of Change, an in-depth look at the 1996-97 Colorado College Hockey Tigers. Join Vince Greco and the Sports 13 team as they look back at this season. Jeff Thomas, voice of the Tigers, will show you every big play in the season in review segment. Watch Winds of Change only on KRDO TV, March 21st at 6 p.m. Brought to you by Sports Radio AM 1240 KRDO. 
Welcome back to the Cadet Ice Arena as the two teams have returned to the ice and we're just moments away from period number two. Who will break the ice? Will it be number 25, Toby Peterson for the Colorado College Tigers? Will it be Brad Engelhart of the Wisconsin Badgers or that man, Scott Swanson? Will Dobbin Speck be the first to crack here tonight or at the south end in the uh, Period number two, will it be Judd Lambert who will be dented first this evening? Those are all the variables that await the dropping of the puck for period number two. At stake is birth in St. Paul, Minnesota, where the Tigers, more than likely, will be taking on the DU Pioneers. But of course, CC has to get out of this one. And that is nowhere near a resolve at this point. And quite honestly, the longer the Badgers hang around, the stronger Kirk Dobbin Speck gets, the tougher this game might become and more pressure might be placed on these young Tigers in the second season. Puck behind the Tiger net as we get underway, squirts towards the doorstep, sent to the point, John Austin has it. Ahead to Toby Peterson, Toby's on the fly. He's down low, he backhands, kicked away, Dobbin Speck near side. Rebound comes to the point. Scott Swanson keeps it in. Kick to the blue line. Tigers keep it in, and then Wisconsin sends it out and looks to hit Reinfrecht down the break. Scott Swanson breaks that up. John Austin ahead to Bodker. Pinned in along the near boards at the point. Three players in a scrum, and uh, the whistle is blown for a frozen puck. Reinfrecht, Dustin Cook, and Stu Bodker separate, and we'll have a face-off just across the Wisconsin blue line. No score in this one. Eight stops for Kirk Dobbinspeck, nine for Judd Lambert. And five on five hockey to begin period number two. Darren Clark wins the draw, comes to Cryway. He holds a man at bay. That's Moroso. Elfring can run it in. Now it comes to Cryway in the slot. Has to go to the far side with it. Brings it to the point to Root. Slaps it down low to Darren Clark. Poked off his stick to neutral ice. Grabbed by Elfring. He flips it back in. Tigers have to get back on side. Dobbinspeck slows it behind the net. Picked up and sent up the near side. Sabo then dishes off the near boards to Moreau. Then ahead to Enrico, breaking. Root shuts it off. It's centered. Knocked down by Lambert. Retrieved, Cryway. Right wing, no look. Connects with Clark off the boards. Goodmanson on. Trailing on the right wing. Badgers poke it away. Cryway gobbles it up. Rolls it towards the far boards. Intercepted by Bianchi. And then he has it taken away at neutral ice by Clark. As Bianchi couldn't maintain possession. Lead pass broken up. But Anderson falls down. And Sabo picks it up in front of a streaking T.J. Tanberg. Puck ripped deep into the Tiger zone by the Badgers. Slowed by Lambert. Up the near side by Elfring. Connects with Tanberg. Quickly to Darren Clark. Clark leads the rush, but it's not a flashy one. And it's broken up high in the Wisconsin zone by LaPlante. Sent towards the Tiger end. Broken up by Elfring. Fielded at neutral ice by Peterson. Sent deep into the Tiger end near corner. There's Rude to get it. Near side to Tanberg. Junior from Littleton will lead the rush. Three on three through center ice, in at the right point, tries to get around LaPlante, whistle, and the Tigers are offside. We'll pause for our first timeout, still scoreless, played 159 in this period. We'll be right back. News 13, the leader in total news coverage, not only bringing you the big stories. Witnesses say flames could be seen shooting 10 feet into the spring sky. But all the stories. The Department of Corrections is using wild horses to tame inmates near Canyon City. Taking you beyond the headlines and giving you a better understanding of what's going on and why. Southern Colorado's most comprehensive local newscast. News 13, everywhere, every day. Puck squirts to the slot in front of Judd Lambert as we come back to action. Chad Hartnell has it. It's poked off his stick whistle. We got a penalty coming against uh, Wisconsin. E.J. Bradley, I believe, going to the penalty box with a roughing call happening away from the play. Don Adams saw it, and the Tigers will get the initial break of period number two, and let's see if the power play can get the Tigers off the dime. 17.47 is left. 2.13 has been played. Roughing call on E.J. Bradley. A 5'11", 185-pound junior from New Hyde Park, New York. And eight goals, 13 assists, 20, 
One point in 36 games played for Wisconsin. This is his 37th of the year. One of the few Badgers to have played in every game this year. Puck goes behind the Tiger net. Grabbed there by Eric Rood. Near side to Elfring. Elfring right wing. Open is Toby Peterson. Doesn't control the puck. Tigers are offside. And they'll bring it back for a faceoff. And we'll take another timeout and come back for the Tiger power play after you hear and see this. KSKX SAX 105.5, Southern Colorado's hottest radio station, brings you the SAX New Orleans Jazz Blast. SAX 105.5 wants to send you and a friend to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Five days in the Big Easy, and it's easy to win. Just listen to SAX 105.5, the station that plays smooth jazz and soft hits. The SAX New Orleans Jazz Blast is brought to you by Leather Express and KSKX SAX 105.5. We come back to action at the Cadet Ice Arena. Tigers made initial penetration. Badgers cleared it out. Fielded by Alfring to Austin. Right wing Toby Peterson. Full head of steam. And at the right point. Looks to pull off. Now shovels it behind the net to Bodker. Bodker pinned by Gruden. Fights through it. Goes back to Peterson in the corner. Now back to Stu. Stu doesn't control. Gruden gets to it. Tries to clear it up the near side. Badgers are going to get out. They might think shorthanded here. But the lead pass too far for Bianchi. Slapped up the near side by Lambert. Now Root has trouble with it, Enrico's got it, shoots, knocked down by Lambert, rebound, knocked down by Lambert, shorthanded effort by the Badgers is very good, but the Tigers come out of it, dodging a bullet. In comes Goodmanson, to the left point to Darren Clark. He waits for his power play unit to come on the ice, to Peters, to Scott Swanson, near side to Peters, 34 seconds left, through the slot, Brian Swanson, wrist shot, the save, Dobbin Speck, rebound Darren Clark to Brian Swanson. Up top to Scott. Lateral along the blue line, then back to Brian far side. Wrist shot through the slot. Comes all the way to the point. Badgers will get it. Scott Swanson falls down, gets up quickly. Bianchi's going to the net, takes the drive. Lambert makes the stop. Rebound to Brian Swanson. Badgers having the better of this Tiger power play. To neutralize to Goodmanson. Backhand pass to Dan Peters. Pocket pick by Anderson, who runs it deep into the Tiger end. That's going to kill off the Tiger power play. And we'll go back to five on five in Wisconsin. Seems to be gaining in strength and confidence here as we go to the 1543 mark. Left in period number two. Puck pushed to neutralize. Grabbed by LaPlante. Runs it in deep. Badgers are going to be content to wait for their chances. Lambert steers it up the near side. Exharos can't field it. It is picked up by Yuri Gusick, and as he tries to center, it's deflected back into the Wisconsin zone. Tigers and Badgers complete changes here as Wisconsin sends it the length of the ice, and here's an icing call on Big Red. So play stops with 15-18 left in period number two. We are still scoreless. Most every seat in the house, at least on both sides, is full. A lot of standing around the end zone. The auxiliary bleachers behind the uh, north end net, though, still have some room in it. So the Tigers, again, are not going to get to complete capacity, but they have sold out the normal seating portion here at the Cadet Ice Arena. Good look at Kirk Dobbins-Speck, who has gone the distance tonight. Last night surrendered five goals, or seven goals, I beg your pardon, in the first two periods and retired for the evening. Not so much because he wasn't playing well, but because he had seen enough. Here's Stu Bodker nearly going coast to coast, and it's broken up by Dobbins-Speck. Bodker accelerating, crowd got excited. He stepped around the last man, but had to fire before being wrapped up. Dobbins Speck didn't have a lot of help out front. In fact, if you were with us during our pregame show, you saw the Badgers walk away from a couple of loose pucks in their own end that turned into Aaron Karp and goals to build a 5-1 to one lead. Tigers had two four-goal unanswered schemes during the course of last night's game. Badgers have it in the far circle, push it to the blue line. Needham fights to keep it in, it ricochets towards the corner. Bodker gets it away from the plot. now he's pinned to the boards. Bodker takes it back from the plot. wants to center, picked up behind the net by Toby Peterson, dishes to Scott Swanson, in, doesn't get much on it, and it's wide. He had Dobbin Speck dead to right. Now he's got it again off a deflection, sends it down low, Dobbin Speck, oh, has to sit down and cover up, as he didn't quite know whether to push it up the far side or cover it up, and he wound up uh, executing both moves and sitting on the putt. 14.32 left here in period number two. We are still scoreless, and both teams are changing up. 
High School Basketball on Sports Radio earlier this afternoon. Our congratulations to the Harrison boys as they knock off, or I beg your pardon, the Sierra boys knocking off Evergreen. Sierra, it's first ever state championship any sport. And our congratulations as well to the Harrison girls. They did not win today, uh, but they gave Lamar a pretty good battle. Lamar 25-0 on the year, winning its third straight girls 4A state title. Badgers dump it into the zone near side. Now towards the slot, broken up Toby Peterson, retrieved by Gusick, centers. Tigers break it up, but it's kept alive by Bjornley, then taken away by Hartnell. Tigers head back the other way, two on two. Hartnell at the right point, pulls up, dishes at Tanberg. It goes by him behind the net. Tanberg retrieves, sends it to the corner for Carpenter, intercepted by Smith. Smith sends it up the near side, broken up once, but the Badgers get out, and Gusick's got a breakaway. In, shoots, misses, and a break for Judd Lambert. Gusick had the upper right-hand portion of the net, just got it up a little high, and the Tigers dodge a serious bullet for the second time in this period. 13.55 left, Tigers and Badgers scoreless here at the Cadet Ice Arena. Tigers, Cal Elfring, I believe, took a gamble along the near side to try and keep the puck in the Tigers zone, and when he went down, the Badgers were sprung and Gusick was ahead of the field. There's a look at the Tiger bench. On the left of your screen, sophomore backup Todd Gustine. Saw a little action in the second Minnesota game here a couple of weeks ago. And that's been his first and only action. Todd hopes to crack this lineup before he graduates. Out of the zone comes Brian Swanson. Lead to Voorhees, splits the defense, retrieves the puck in the corner. Behind the net, the red shirts are waiting for it. Sabo sends it up the far side. Peters keeps it in. Retrieved in the corner by Sabo. Sends it behind the net near side to Anderson. Forecheck nearly frees it up. Now it comes to the point. Glove by Ian Peterson. Kept in, backhanded along the near boards. Needham gets some help from Ian Peterson. Kicked to the slot by Brian Swanson. Broken up, and it drifts to neutral ice. And the Badgers are streaking again. But Dan Peters gets in front of Moreau. Loses an edge. Badgers are in. Wrist shot left side. Glove by Lambert. Off the stick of the Badgers alternate captain, Rick Enrico, and the Tigers again avoid an odd man goal to be scored by the Badgers. So CC hanging tough defensively. The offense sputtering a bit here in period number two with 13-11 remaining in a scoreless game two of the WCHA best of three playoffs. Backhanded behind the net. From the far side, Bikes Haros up the near side. Tigers fight to get it out. Cryway to Clark. Wants to make a lead pass to Goodmanson, but he's covered. Comes near side instead to Cryway. Badgers get there first. Bounce it to neutral ice. Grabbed by Scott Swanson. Steers it ahead for Clark. It turns into a turnover. And in comes Smith. But Bradley was in before him, and the Badgers are offside. Well, Swanson and Clark could not connect. So Swanson sent it ahead trying to find Goodmanson and stepping in front of it anticipating very well was Smith a 6 190 pound junior from Apple Valley Minnesota and he was looking for a seventh goal of the season but Bradley was in ahead of him face off above the blue line drilled deep into the Tiger end by Anderson it goes through the end zone up the far side picked up by Clark doesn't get much on it but Cryway connects Brings it in at the right point, steps around Darren Clark. The two miscommunicate, and the Tigers are offside. Cryway wanted Clark to loop behind him, and Darren went in front of him. Darren had thinking maybe Cam was going to give up the puck. And the offside call calls for a change of personnel. Fresh wheels come out for both clubs with 12.35 left in period number two. Don Lucia Coaches Show, Tuesday night at 6, live from Cup Foods on Austin Bluffs. We'll be talking the playoffs, or and we could be talking about golfing, depending upon whether the Tigers get through this one tonight, or if necessary, are forced to a game three and get through that one. Just a lot of undecideds right now in a game that is still very much up in the air. There is no momentum to speak of in this one as the Badgers run it deep into the Tiger end and another icing call on Wisconsin. This time we'll pause for a timeout and return. No score. Back in 30 seconds. KRDO TV, the station that brings you more local sports, presents Winds of Change, an in depth look at the 1996 97 Colorado College Hockey Tigers. Join Vince Greco and the Sports 13 team as they look back at this season. 
Jeff Thomas, voice of the Tigers, will show you every big play in the season in review segment. Watch Winds of Change only on KRDO TV March 21st at 6 p.m. Brought to you by Sports Radio AM 1240 KRDO. We are back. Tigers tip it into the Badger end after Wisconsin had cleared off after the faceoff. Badgers clear once more, and this time it's dumped in deep by Needham. Circling the net is Gruden, leaves it behind, picked up Krug, right wing, Engelhart, lead, broken up Scott Swanson. It drifts into the Tiger end. Needham will pick this one up, racing past Ryan Preck, pulls up behind the net to Austin. Austin doesn't quite handle the puck. Now headed to Toby Peterson off his skates and stick to Bodker. Bodker runs it in deep. Comes into the near corner, picked up after it circles the net by Krug. Lead pass to Engelhart, belted by Root, but not before he delivers. And the Badgers bring it into the near corner. Dug out by Dan Peters. Behind the net, far corner, Smith and Root in a race for it. Both over skate it. Picked up instead by Bjornley. He tries to hit Smith. It's grabbed by Root. Flips it through the neutral zone. Picked up by Sabo. Pulls up in the near circle. Now moves to the slot. Waiting for a line change to be complete. It's pushed out of the zone, deep into the Tiger end, but it's picked off by Dan Peters. Above the circles, lead pass to Hartnell does not connect. Does go to the net, though, and is slowed by Dobbin Speck, left wing to Gusick. Gusick steps around Carpin, sends it ahead, connects with Bianchi, gets around Rude, breaking to the net, drop pass high. Anderson the shot, Lambert the save, rebound set far side. Tigers take down one of the Badgers, no call. Hartnell runs it into the Badger end, fielded high by Anderson, rolls it slowly near corner. Badgers make another change. Lambert behind the net, slows it. Root over skates it. Lambert's got to try again, hits one of the Badgers. Now it comes into the crease, and Lambert has to glove it. Root couldn't make the first clear. Lambert couldn't make the second, and he scampered back in front of the net. It's time to take a quick wrister from behind the net by Gusick, who was hoping maybe to send it off his back and into the net. Faceoff will come far circle in the Tiger zone when play resumes. We have 10.34 left in a scoreless matchup here at the Cadet Ice Arena. Next week, the Don Lucia Coaches Show kicks off our week of Tiger hockey coverage. Should CC win this weekend, will then be in St. Paul on Thursday night. 5.45 broadcast time, the Tigers and Denver or Duluth. Puck sent down low, Badgers mishandle it. They had another scoring chance there. Bianchi wrapped up by Brian Swanson, not before he dishes through the slot. Cryway near side, can't do anything with it. Fielded by Scott Swanson, pushes it behind the net. Far side to Elfring. Elfring sends it off the far boards. Tigers have not been able to get in front of the Badger net this period. Tigers run it in deep. Cryway has to get back on side. Goes in pursuit, but the Badgers get to it easily. Send it up the near side. Bianchi doesn't field it. Scott Swanson throws it on net. Dobbins back playing first base. Makes the stop and tells the Tiger offense, you're out. So they'll uh, change up the lines. At least Wisconsin will, and the Tiger bench will look to see who's out and then make its decision. And on comes Ian Peterson, Stewie Bodker, actually Toby Peterson, and John Austin. And the crowd telling the Badger faithful they ought to find a way back to Madison. Stu Bodker breaks through the circle, but without the puck, now it drifts behind the net. Stu has it, gets around Krug, sends it back through the corner. Austin has it, tries to center, nobody home. Krug intercepts, but he's forced to go to the corner with it. Now it comes to the point to Elfring. Down low to Bodker, inside, wrist shot, knocked down. Elfring takes a drive, Dobbin Speck to save. Rebound to the circle, kept alive by Bodker. Comes out of the corner, Tigers have a buzz on now. Up top comes Bodker. He's circling the whole offensive zone. Dishes to Elfring. Tip to Toby Peterson. Toby in the corner. Centers Bodker. Takes the shot. Hits the crossbar. Rebound comes to Scott Swanson. Across the slot. Dobbins but knocks that out. Tigers lose it. And now out of the zone comes X Haros. Looks to the net. Goes down in the corner. Tigers go to dig it out. Scott Swanson who hit the crossbar moments, or Stu Bodker who hit the crossbar moments ago. Austin brings it in back to Bodker. He's down low again. Backhander, Dobbins back to save. There'll be no rebound for Swanson, who is crashing. The crowd is booing. They thought that one hit the underside of the crossbar, breaking the plane, but you saw how it came out. There's no way that was going to be a goal. And with the... Now, wait a minute. Now Don Adam is going to check with the goal judge to see if it was a goal. So hold on to your horses here. 
Both coaches watching intently. I don't know if we have that replay ready in the truck. There is some thought that that might have hit the uh, underside support that sent it out. But really, the angle it was coming out at indicates that it was a clean portion of the crossbar and not the underside where it junctures with the uh, goal support. And now Don Adam coming over to confer with the officials with nine minutes left in the period. We may be getting an explanation here from the public address announcer. It did not cross the goal line, they say. And that's why we still have a scoreless tie. The angle that that puck came back at, very evident that it did not uh, break the plane because it would have dropped down. Badgers get out of the zone. This is Anderson, shovels it ahead. There's an odd man rush, two on one, broken up by Scott Swanson. It trips to the net, and Lambert has to take a deflection stop. Big save by Judd. He has been sharp here in the second period where the Badgers have made some things happen. Now it drifts behind the Tiger net. In fact, to be honest about it, the Badgers are an unfortunate hockey team right now. The Tigers have not been sharp, yet they are still not behind. Grabbed by Hartnell, ahead to Tanberg, one-on-one -on -one against Sabo. TJ loses the puck, retrieves, races for the hit, carries to the corner. Hartnell digs it out to Needham, sends it down low. Dobbins back to save. Hartnell the rebound. Dobbins back to save, and he takes the rebound away from Carpen as well. Dobbins back is sharp tonight as well. Badgers push it out of the zone with a hand pass. It's going the length of the ice, and the icing call is waved off as well. Crowd wanted a call, grabbed by... Peters to Needham, ahead to Brian Swanson, tipped and grabbed by Clark. Darren is in at the left point, tries to send it down low, broken up by Wisconsin, picked up by Enrico, no look behind the back to Moreau, rides it to the corner. Lambert will slow it with 7.51 left in the period. Rude flooded steam left to right behind the net, tries to push it out of the zone. This one hits Don Adam, he's sandwiched between two players, and Clark and Moreau are joined along the far side as play comes to a halt. We'll take a timeout with 7.44 left, another scoreless period. We'll be back after this. We're number one, dynamite. We just begun. Grand Slam, it's out of here. Clap your hands, stand up and cheer. Feel the heat. More local sports. Left, right, left, backhander. Save Horvath. Get more. Slam dunk. Razor sharp. In a zone. Catch the fever. Beat the buzzer. More. 